So um, this lecture is going to be composed of two parts. First, I just want to introduce you into the project we run in Algeria, just as a project. And uh, the second part is about uh, a part of the knowledge that we use is coming from Wilhelm Reich. And Wilhelm Reich created his own kind of language to describe the way he sees nature. He's speaking about organ and door, and uh, normal scientists can't deal with this because it's like like Kiswaeli for them, you know? They, they just don't get the point. So I want to try to translate the language of Wilhelm Reich into a language of science that somebody who studied at university is, is supposed to be able to understand because it's in their school books. And this is going to be the second part. It's going to be a bit more scientific and difficult to maybe um, get the points, but I'm, I'm going to do my best. The first part is about basically about the, the beauty of life and of the creation because it's a beautiful story that happened down there and following its uh, unique own rules. And if we get the first foil, uh, this is how it started for me. Uh, I, I, I've got a gift uh, by nature. I, I have every, about every seven years I have a dream and I wake up in the morning and I exactly know this is one of those dreams who is forecasting the next seven years. Um, that was uh, maybe five years ago, and I, I dreamt myself being in a, in a quite old rotten palace in the middle of the desert. It, it was uh, yeah, um, from the 19th century. It was empty, basically, or it looked like being empty for quite a while. And I was sitting on a, on a desktop and doing some research on plants, and some people I, I knew from my network in Berlin were at my side, and we used to uh, get about six to eight hundred uh, uh, refugees from Central Africa every day, and we were just separating. One third was sent further to, to the Mediterranean, to Europe. One third just went straight into hospital for medical care. And for one third, we started to, to build up settlements mm -hmm. with very easy methods, but with a very high living quality. And there were funny details in that dream, like my eldest son coming to visit us for a kind of social year, and I had to pick him up from the airport. And so I drove with a jeep to the airport, and it was a brand new building in the middle of the desert. And I was getting curious in, in this dream, what the heck is this? You, know, you don't have these types of airports in the middle of the desert. Um, but I knew you know, this dream is one of those dreams, so I was waiting, and normally after one and a half years, of time, you start to, to uh, understand what it really means. So one and a half years later, I was in Berlin, Can we get the next photo? and I got to know Margit and Maya Abdelaziz, the people from Algeria. He studied in Berlin, and um, um, he was introduced to me as somebody who was doing desert greening. And he himself had a, had a weird story. He, his family comes from the south, southern part of uh, uh, Algeria, and he tried to get tourism into the territories of uh, the tribes down there. And uh, it, it failed in a terrible way. He had, he had a good time on the, on the uh, tourist trade in Berlin and started to organize the first big tour for tourists to go to the Tuareg area and flew to some ancient, historic, prehistoric sites in the middle of the desert to see these beautiful paintings on the walls of you know, women in mini skirts 10,000 years ago. And on the way back, one of the helicopters crashed down and I think 11 people died. And he was supposed to be on this helicopter. But he just, before taking off, he remembered that they, le they left the rubbish in the desert. So he stepped out and picked up the plastic bags and wanted to get on, on, on the helicopter again. It already lifted off and crashed 50 meters further. It came down and 11 people died. And he, he was in dire straits because he brought those people down there. One of his best friends was in the machine and got completely burned. Uh, he survived, luckily, but uh, others died. So the, the pilot and his two little sons died. And um, so... <laughs> Um, he was talking to, to elder people in this area because he, he needed help. 
mentally. And they said, you survived for a reason, because the desert still needs you. So um, a few years later, it was a bad time in Algeria. They just ended the civil war, and it stopped raining. So uh, the country was in a, in a real big uh, problem. They, had, they started to import drinking water with ships from Europe to make people survive. And he said, OK, if I, if I was able to collect all the knowledge in Berlin about uh, Wilhelm Reich and the other alternative science which he went into, uh, it seems to be uh, uh, that I have to do this in Algeria. And he went down, and he, he lost all the help from other groups he had before. They just were afraid of going into the war territories. So he did it only with his family. And he went down and started uh, Desert Dreaming Project in 2003 based on the knowledge he had. Next slide. And this is how it looked like when they arrived. It's the area where his wife was born, so they had family down there. And um, I want to ask you to have a very close look at the sky, because for normal people, sky is a sky, and it has clouds or it doesn't have clouds. And we don't make a big difference. But I, I want to give you a feeling of the difference what the uh, at atmosphere of a desert is, of an unhealthy desert, and how it looks like, how it changes when it's the climate, the sky is healing. So this was the condition, how they started. Impossible to breathe during daytime, like a heavy load of, of things on your back, pressing everything down, hot, and no rain. And you had this dizzy, dizzy grayish, yellowish atmosphere. Uh, that you can't even see a real blue in the sky. But no structure at all. Everything one, one dizzy thing. Okay, next picture. And this was kind of um, the times, the last picture, the times when the sun is supposed to, to shine. And when it's supposed to rain, what you get is this kind of brown sausages hanging in the sky. These are oversaturated clouds, which have up to eight times more water than they were supposed to have when it starts raining. So all the humidity is caught in these funny clouds, and they hang in the sky. And you can see it's not even so hot, but it's, it's depressing. It's an atmosphere you can't live under it, and nothing can live under it, not the plants, and not the humans, and not the animals. So this is the second time of weather. And if this is you know, coming and going, this dizzy and the brown clouds, and it's never raining, this is the state the entire Zahel zone is in, since we have the uranium mining in Niger and the atomic bomb testing from the French people in South Algeria in the 60s. This is what people have, have done to Northern Africa. OK, next one. So he picked up the knowledge he had for from Wilhelm Reich, it's the idea of building cloud busters, which is a, a way to manipulate energies between Earth and sky, and to get them flowing again. And normally, Wilhelm Reich says you need a big area of water to ground the mission, because everything you pull down from sky, it sits afterwards somewhere. It's poisonous, it's like radioactivity. And if you don't have a big uh, water like a big lake, uh, you're poisoning, putting too much poison into, into the in environment, energetic poisoning. So, uh, or you have flowing water that takes away this energies to, to the sea, then it's okay. But in the desert, you can't start with any running water or you don't have any lakes. So, he built a, a little basin of three times three uh, meters. And uh, you see the concrete, but the inside the concrete, there's a lot of knowledge and technology to recreate the water, to keep it in a healthy state, to pull out the bad energy that he puts from the sky and to turn it into healthy and open water again. So this is basically stuffed with high tech. Uh, so this, I would say, is a combination of Wilhelm Reich and Victor Schauberger, in a way, that he used. And they started trying to make rain. You can still see the the dizzy atmosphere, and it did not work. And uh, so he, they, they had to think about something else. 
And um, <coughs> the next thing they tried to do is to amplify the power of this device. It was the only time that we're using active technologies powered by a battery. Uh, I don't know exactly which kind of foil, uh, of coil they put inside the, the cloud busting machine, but some, something that was derived from te Tesla's uh, invention. In, in Maybe it was a DFLR uh, donut coil or something pulsed with certain frequencies. And that was the moment when he managed to break through this blocked energy field between sky and earth. And I just want to show you what happened. Don't, don't listen to the comments. It's in German. It's not so important. Listen to the atmosphere and look at the clouds. This is like the Apokultur. There are the Sedierungs points where the energy from the body is destroyed. And then the Earth is also like the human being. You have to block this energy. And so there is a big loop. It is like a big loop. Bei dem Einsatz des Geräts geht es nicht darum, den natürlichen Ablauf klimatischer Prozesse zu zerstören, sondern umgekehrt darum, die zerstörten Bedingungen ihres natürlichen Funktionierens wiederherzustellen. Bei diesem Versuch hier am 11. September ist das sehr stark zu sehen, wie eine Umwälzung und eine Deblockierung der Dorfenergie durch einen starken Abzug geschieht, dass es zu Tausenden von Blitzen kommt. Die ganze Nacht hat es danach geblitzt und in einem Umkreis von 100 Kilometern kam es zum Regen. Der Sturm war auch heftig, die Temperatur ist gesunken, die Luftfeuchtigkeit ist, hat sich erhöht. Hier sieht man die ersten Truppen, 20 Uhr fertig, am 11. Und hier, der Sturm war so groß, dass äh, der äh, Apparat einfach umgefallen ist. Wir haben ihn abgeschaltet. Und hier sind wir ungefähr 80 Kilometer von der Stelle. Das ist Lagrat, Stadtzentrum. Und es hat auch die ganze Nacht heftig weiter geregnet. Das heißt, die Operation ist äh, geglückt. Und äh, in der Mittelkarte sind beseitigt worden. Okay, um, and now if, if you're exactly in the state where, where you start bringing energy fluctuations into the sky, there are certain moments when you can see the structures of the fields in the clouds that build up. Later, it looks like a normal cloud, but the moment when it starts, it kind of you have the skeleton of the energy fields building up. And, and the vapor starts to build around this skeleton. You can see the structures that are created and learn a lot about the way energy flows in between different potentials in the sky. So this is this beautiful picture of these feathers kind of covering the sky. And they, after 10, 15 minutes, de develop the full clouds. But it's only a short period of time when you can see how it builds up in this picture. Here you have the typical vertical motion. If you have, you, you, you kind of um, aim at one spot where you need, the, you need a sense for, 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 for seeing the energy structures with your eyes or with your soul. And then you, you're looking for certain points where, where things are interconnecting. And if you hit exactly on these spots, um, from there on you have a grid that is covering a, a bigger area. And you start pulling energies along the lines of this grid and this would be one of these lines where you can see the vortex of energy flowing towards the point where the cloudbuster was pointing at. And along these lines, the cloud is starting to spread and covering a bigger area, like you could say um, a diameter of 200 kilometers is okay. You need one station and you can cover a quite big area and in the direction of the wind, um, the rain was going up to Tunisia to the coast.
So you don't need many spots in Africa to, to cover the entire, entire continent. Here it's a, bit, a little bit later in the status and you can see how it is rolling in. You get a big, it's building up a kind of its own weather, what, local uh, uh, climate uh, structure like a, like a um, weather front that is, you know, you see, normally you see them on the, on the, on the satellite images, how weather is forming and moving through, through a continent. So it's building its own local structures around that point. And this is how it looks like after when you did a good job and you have lots of rain. We have lots of new lakes in the area where we're working and we managed to rise the level of groundwater since 2004 by 30 meters. 30 meters? Yeah. And now it... <laughs> the next, next foil. This is how it looks in, in the time when it's supposed to be green in the desert. So uh, the seeds are naturally there in the ground and life pops out everywhere. And you can do kind of normal agriculture, growing your stuff in, in winter when it's uh, like cooler and rainy. And during summer, uh, you can make wells and use well water for watering the trees that would not survive without. And, the, the rule is you have to cover 80 hectares with forests, mm -hmm. trees older than five to eight years. And then you don't need any technological help to keep this local climate alive. And the trees are doing exactly the same job the Cloudbuster is doing at the moment. And all you have to do is live. That's it. Okay, next slide. This is what, what happens if you don't control everything. We're not into control concepts, so um, we just, nobody knows even from the government that he's doing this job. The local people thank Allah for the rain and have a good life. And this is what is happening at the moment in the, in the uh, vicinity of our spot. The government discovered that there's enough rain to make agriculture, and they're building up cities for 50, 80,000 citizens at one go with German architects making the planning. And uh, since two years, Algeria is, is, is exporting wheat to Europe. So this is what happened without us even touching it. Is this new, you say? Or it's not built yet. It's, it's uh, on one of the streets, you know, they have these big uh, uh, advertisements showing what they plan to do in the desert. So this is just a computer animated picture <laughs> of what they just start building now. Ah, because, because of the rain. Yeah, because of the rain, and they have many lakes in this area, so they have a good stable supply with drinking water and water for agriculture. And they do everything wrong. I, I really pity those people because they completely invest in the wrong concepts. But that's what they know. So this is the reason why we really think we we have to hurry up, build up a school for desert greening to introduce the right con concepts, the right type of architecture that is working with clay and sand and maybe nylon uh, bags to build up walls, uh, establishing uh, uh, permaculture uh, forests to, to take the harvest from the trees and not from fields, um, to introduce a complete cycle of, of um, waste management, man management to create terra preta soils because you will, one day you will need soil, you know, normal brown or black soil to have good agriculture. So this is the thing we want to introduce. But you can't do it, you know, just as a family sitting on a single farm. You, you need a, a, a bit more logistics and we, we just plan building a school to teach people. It's, so the planning is quite advanced. So the only thing we don't have is money because it's a, it's a one-man show basically in a way too. But, uh, <coughs> Um, next one, please. So this is the, the computer animation of what we plan to build down there. Um, mm -hmm. she's, the architect is part of uh, the family of Maya Delisis. And she started, she just finished studying architecture. This was her, her final thesis at university. And she learned a lot from the uh, Vedic architecture, building nature-like forms that give good energies in, for, for living quality. Next 
direction. This is another kind of beautiful view how it's supposed to be looking like in let's say five to ten years. And, yeah. and this is the, the type of architecture. It, it's not in Janan. It's just uh, a sample of how we plan to build. It's very simple. You just need nylon uh, bags like they used to, to distribute wheat in, from the UNO. And you need uh, sand and clay, mix it, put it into the bags, some barbed wire in between to stop the bags from moving. And you can build structures that survive 400 years, don't suffer from earthquakes and give you a beautiful living climate inside because humidity is controlled and heat is controlled in between day and night because you have thick walls. And it's not, nothing to be compared to these tin buildings that they have all over Africa. And uh, the funny thing was, and that's why, why I, I had to laugh so much with Majid, um, we were sitting together one, one, one day and uh, he was showing me photographs of uh, um, you know, little journeys he did when he was in Nigeria. And then he came up with the first picture of this uh, um, presentation, which was a castle that is 15 kilometers, kilometers south of this point where he does, started to work. And he showed me a picture, and I was kicked in my dream, because it was exactly the castle I've seen. And uh, this is kind of, it's going to be, I think, my part of the work. Um, the castle belongs to a Sufi order, the Tijaniya, and it's completely empty. It's still in a good state. It hasn't been used since 1930, except of the grave that is there, because of the founder, the Tijani, the founder of the Sufi order, was buried there. And, um, um, but the Sufi order has, I think, 230 million members worldwide. So they're quite well organized. They spread all of Africa and go down to Indonesia, to the Asian part. And uh, lots of uh, those Sufis travel to the grave of the founder of the order. So they just start building one of these airports in, in the five-star hotel in the middle of the <laughs> desert <laughs> to handle the amounts of people who come in to see the grave of, of Tijani. Um, it's just, you know, just in, uh, some of these little little details out of my dream. You know, so now I know why uh, airports are designed in the middle of the desert. <laughs> okay, next one. 